Okay, so we have our groundhog with lots of pieces of our game coming together. I would like to have a start button and start the game. And when the game is over, I would like to be able to restart the game. That's going to lead me to loading from levels, but I want to build my way up there. So for this first video, let's see if we can add in a start button with a background scene that fades away and comes back when the game is over and when it starts. So let's try to go there. I have created a hedge and that's going to be when I run into the hedge, the game is going to be over. I'm going to set up a trigger on it. I have a box collider 2D trigger on it. And so I'll be able to use that as my ability to send a message that the game is over. So let's go to create some things in the GUI. First thing I want to make is a background image. And this image is going to be called just background image. And uh, let's make another thing in the GUI, which is going to be a button. And this is going to be our start button. Okay, well, let's play with some pieces of the start button. It has a text piece underneath it. Let's make that text piece say start and change the font to be our uh, pixelated font. And now let's zoom up and see the whole canvas. Canvas, let's take that button and move it to the middle of what's going on here. Make it a little bigger, why not? And then drop it right in the middle. And we're gonna take this background image and make it as big as we can here. And to make it look nice, let's give it a sprite here. My tile set sprite, drop you in there. And we're all set with my snowy uh, tile in here. Now, right now it doesn't do anything, but it is there and it covers up everything in the GUI. And what we want to do is start setting up the game manager. And so we want to say, hey, game manager, public game object, start button, and public game object, background image. Okay, so to edit a lot of things with the GUI and start scripting, we're going to need to say using unityengine.ui. And that's going to let a few other things show up when we ask for them. So if you are trying to edit things in the UI, don't forget to add that to your script. So let's set up a start button down here. Public void start button. And when this is called, I'm going to call the start button game object set active to false. Let's make it disappear. And before I code too much more, let's see if we can get that wired up just to make sure that things are working here. And so game manager, you need to know about this cool start button that I'm making. And you should also know about the background image for what I want to do with that next. Okay. And hey, start button, you need to have something that happens when you click. Uh, let's go find that object. The game manager object has a really cool method. And that method is part of game manager script. It's called start button. Good. So when it's clicked, it should disappear. Let's see if that works. <coughs> Runs. I click it. It disappears. Yes. Okay. We tested out our basic functionality with wiring things together. Now it's ready to do something else. Let's start making that image fade away. And I want to fade away slowly. That's going to involve lerping between colors. We talked about lerp, this linear interpolation. There's a great website that I found called gamedevbeginner.com. And it has a lot of great examples of how to lerp in Unity. So many things involve lerping with the vector threes and colors can be lerped as well. So I recommend you go read that web page for some more great examples of that lerping. It is very comprehensive right now. So let's see what we can do. I want to have a coroutine going on down here. I enumerator. And this I enumerator, let's call it color lerp. We are going to have an end color. Like, what is the goal? 
and we're going to have the duration. So this duration is going to be how long does it take to get from one spot to the other. So let's go see if we can find the start time. That's going to be zero and a starting value for the color. Well, let's go talk to the background image, get component image, and then it's going to be your color. Good. Okay. So background image, go get that image component. Let's see where that is, right? We're in the background image. Go get the image component and go find the color. So I'm going to change this color here. And what I'm going to do is change it from its color now to whatever end value I pass in. How long do I want to do it? I want to do it for this duration. So while time is less than duration, I am going to fade that color. I'm going to constantly have to go back to it. Well, I don't want to call get component all the time. I am going to set up something else up here, like an image equals that. And then here I want to say sprite because here I want to say sprite dot color equals color lerp from my start value of what it was at the beginning to the end value where what color are you trying to go to and then let's do time divided by duration how much along that progress have we made so we've got time starting off at zero we've got a while loop as long as time is less than the duration say two seconds or five seconds, find out your intermediate point for your color. Okay, we need time to pass here. And so we're gonna to talk to the time class and say, how much time has passed since the last time I was here? Time dot delta time. And then at the end, we're going to yield a new, let's say null. We don't really need to yield anything. Okay, so we are ready here. And oh, yield return null. Finally, we have our I enumerator return value happy. And finally, at the end, let's just make things exact. It might not be exact as it was going here through the while loop. And so we're going to say sprite.color equals end value right at the end to calibrate to be exactly what we want. Our while loop might have jumped, or time might have jumped a while, and we wouldn't get exactly there. It might be like 0.9992, and this is going to make it exactly the color that we want. Okay, so let's start this off. Let's see if I can start a coroutine. And it's going to be the color lerp coroutine, and the color I want to pass in is a new color object. And... Yeah, let's take two seconds to get there. Okay, so what it says is it's just going to keep color uh, red, green, blue at uh, multi or maximum power here. So it's going to be white, but the alpha transparency is going to be zero. Let's see what happens when I click the start button now. I think this might work. Let's run our game. Okay. Two seconds took to fade away. Try it one more time just to show you. Here's the game. I click on the start button. The start button disappears, and this background fades away for two seconds. And if I click on it over here, you can watch the color over here slowly fade as it goes. So when I click on start, you can see the alpha transparency slowly disappear for those two seconds. Great. Now, next thing I want to do, let's set it up so that when somebody hits that hedge, they're going to call this method game over. And the game over method, let's put things back the way they were.
we get our start button back. And I want to turn that color back into full-blown white with a transparency of, I want to have my alpha V1 so I can actually see what I'm doing. And while, while I'm doing this, I don't want to accidentally have any dialogue running. So I'm going to say stop all coroutines. Just if the game is over, nothing else should be doing anything. And then dialogue hide. Oh, to hide dialogue. Just to say the game is over, make everything disappear, get rid of it from the GUI, and we're ready to go. Okay, so let's try to run into that hedge and see if we can get back to our starting menu. Start, start the game. There's my groundhog. I can run around and do stuff. I can see some dialogue show up. I hit that hedge. Well, nothing happens because I forgot to program it. Yes, so let's go back to the scripts on the hedge and give it a nice trigger. Void on trigger enter 2D. If collision game object compare tag to the player, then I want to talk to the game manager instance game over. Now let's see if that works. I can imagine that I do all these things and then when I get to it, it's not really there. So start, move around. I can see all the different pieces and let's run into that hedge. Ooh, there we go. Okay, and I start the game again. But I'm not back where I was, right? I'm down here running around and actually I can still run around even though it said the game is over. It's not going to get me back. I'm going to be over here. I'm going to be over there sliding on the ice. That's not what I want to happen. I'm still sliding on the ice way over there. Notice I'm way over here. Okay, so that's why we need to load scenes back and forth. We have a start menu. We have the game over. We want to get back to where we were. One way that I used to do was to, to turn the whole game into a prefab and then recreate that prefab because I didn't know about scenes. And now scenes are making more sense to me. I'm going to talk through how to make scenes and swapping them out as, as in the next video. Great.